Good morning, everyone. Today we have the pleasure of meeting an amazing individual, someone famous for their practice of transcendentalist values, Bedek Tompov. She's here to provide a first-person perspective on the lifestyle of a modern transcendentalist. She argues that it's important for us to incorporate transcendentalist values into our everyday lives as frequently as possible. Our society is so overwhelmed by the complexity of today's technology-run world. Thoreau said it best, simplicity, simplicity, simplicity. Would reverting to a life of simplicity change the course of humanity for the better? Now, Benedict Tompov. Thank you, Olivia. A huge misconception that I see quite often in today's society is that transcendentalism can't be practiced in this age of technology. We live in a world where social media consumes our everyday lives. Technology affects the way individuals communicate, learn, and think. It is essential in defining our society and determines how one interacts with others on a daily basis. Although it may positively impact our ever-evolving world, technology holds the potential to stifle an individual's authenticity, confining them to a predetermined life of conformity. Um, excuse me. <laughs> Did you have something you wanted to say? Excuse me, my name is Tr Trump Hay, and I'm from California. California. Shouldn't we perceive the world's technological advancements as productive? The advancements of yeah. new technology has been taking place since the beginning of human history. From the invention of items like the spear and knives made out of rocks, and sticks to aid in capturing and killing of animals for food, to items like the first printing press and the computer. Living without technology is equivalent to living without progress which goes against the human instinct to adapt. Adaption is what has kept us alive and flourishing as the dominant species on Earth. Even Thoreau used technology to spread his ideas through writing, etc. Excellent question. That brings me to my next point, which is that although these advancements have shaped the society we currently live in, we should take care that we, as a race, don't become overly dependent on technology and that it doesn't hinder our natural experience. This is especially important for the younger audience who are beginning to outline their person and are barraged by societal standards. Technology has infiltrated the development of the new generation in which parents provide technology as a source of entertainment instead of allowing their child to exercise their own creativity and imagination. Internet influencers, as they're called, especially those found on YouTube and a variety of other video sharing platforms, manipulate the minds of the young children before they've developed the capacity to form their own views and opinions on world-altering topics. People attempt to mirror these influencers because they believe their life is ideal. However, this isn't realistic because only a small portion of their lives are being shown and it may be edited for the sake of popularity and views. As Emerson writes in his iconic essay, Self-Reliance, envy is ignorance, imitation is suicide. Um, excuse me, shouldn't the younger audience be exposed to the media to help shape their ideas as they prepare to become a contributing member of society? We shouldn't only focus on YouTubers and social media influencers and deem the entirety of the platform negative. Through social media, people of all ages have been granted easy access to world news, allowing them perspective and awareness. Now, a few years back, I met a man named Jan through a mutual friend I've had connections with for 16 years now. After a long dinner where Jan shared stories of his national and international travels and his exposure to different cultures, Jan revealed to have a very simplistic but rich life. His spontaneous and adventurous life reflects perfectly the foundation of the transcendental philosophy. This man inspired me to follow Emerson's beliefs in a moderate way that can still coexist with the modern world. He skipped out on the college experience and became a self-taught musician and earns a humble living as a music teacher and artist. You will always find those who think they know what is your duty better than you know it. It is easy to live in the world, to live after the world's opinion, but the great man is he who, in the midst of the crowd, keeps with perfect sweetness the independence of solitude. 
Although the utilization of te telecommunication has authorized the increased availability of what's going on in the government, society should be able to use technology without allowing it to impede our individual thought processes, particularly for those in their formative years who are easily influenced. Oftentimes, adolescents find that they tend to change their opinions because of what they hear or see online instead of staying true to themselves. When one remains true to his or herself, they're completely genuine with what they feel, deeply value, and what they are passionate about. It also translates to honestly communicating your feelings both with yourself and others, which allows for your truth to flow through you and into the world. Both Thoreau and Emerson would most likely be repulsed by today's society and obsession with our devices. That said, we should escape technology's overbearing grasp on our lives and revert to a life of simplicity and legitimate meaning. How can you do that? A basic but fundamental start can be limiting your usage of technology, gradually but surely. Exploring your hobbies and self-interests can further deepen your relationship with yourself. And lastly, experiencing what the world has to offer firsthand, instead of through your television or phone screens, can aid in developing individualism and connect you to your surroundings. Thank, thank you for listening, and I hope my speech inspired a new outlook on your life. A big thank you to our wonderful speaker for sharing her insightful views and those in the audience who took the initiative to participate in the discussion.